What is going on today, guys? We are going to talk about the ever-pressing hot topic of string gauges. There's a lot of information out there on the internet as to what the perfect string gauge is for whatever tuning you're going for, and opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. This video is going to be about my opinions, what works best for me, and these are merely recommendations, okay? So take it all with a grain of salt. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you what to use. It's up to you in the end to determine what works best for you and why. As you probably know, I have a multitude of guitars here in the home studio, and I've got new ones coming and going all the time, and I'm currently running uh, five different string gauges for four different tunings. Huh? So the tunings that I'm currently using on my guitars are of course standard, uh, E flat or half step down standard, drop C, and dad gad. I'm gonna go in depth about what I use for which ones and why. So just a little quick backstory. Uh, for most of my guitar playing life, which is many years now, I had been running 9-42s. to My favorite players were using them, like Steve Vai. You know, if you're using the tip same scale length and the same tunings as some of your favorite guitarists, Try the string gauge they're using. It might work, might not, but it's a good launching off point. So 942s for me was perfect because uh, I was going for more of the lead work back then, and it gave me the flexibility to do bends easily, slides, legato, stuff like that, without having to use too much strength, hand strength, and pressure to depress the strings. You have to think about that too. It's not just the tuning, but it's also how does it feel physically under your fingers, right? There's a lot of different neck profiles out there different widths, different thicknesses, different lengths, there's different fretboard radius, radii, and because all those things factor in, and also fret height. I think a lot of people don't think about that. There's different fret wire with different fret heights and different shapes that feel different under your fingers, and that coincides with what strings you're using too. It all, make, all together combined makes the feel of the neck in your hand. Like I said, many years I was using 942s, in more recent years, as I've gotten into the heavier genres, the more modern metal genres, uh, where there's a lot of drop tuning, detune stuff, I found the nines were just too slack for me. You know, if nines are too light and tens are too tight, nine and a halfs are just right. Nine and a half to 44s, for me, is a perfect, absolute perfect gauge for standard tuned guitars. On Gibson scale length, which is a little bit shorter, that would be a little too slack for me. So on Gibson scale length, standard tuning, I'm using 10 to 46. I find that that's perfect for those. For E flat on Fender scale length, I'm using 10 to 46 as well. And then on Gibson, I would probably bump it up to like 11 to 48s or 11 to 52s. There's so many different string gauge packages now. You can get 11 to 48s, 11 to 52s, 11 to 56. There's so many different ones out there. So it's really a wonderful time to kind of, you know, dip your toe in that pool and get into that whole thing. And it really is a rabbit hole too. I mean, you can, I've tried tons of different string gauges on all different guitars. I've tried tons of, tons of different brands, the different makes and models of strings that they have, and I've kind of settled on these. So, like I said, uh, currently 9.5 to 44s for standard tuning works great for me. For me. Uh, 10 to 46 on standard scale length with half step down, 10 to 46 is amazing. Next up would be drop C for me. So I've got two guitars currently in drop C, and for whatever reason, one of them I'm running 11 to 52s, and the other I am running 11 to 54. And some guitars kind of just speak to me that they just want a certain gauge string on them. You know, sometimes you put a heavier gauge string on there and you adjust, make all the adjustments and you adjust the truss rod, this and that, and it still just doesn't feel right. Uh, that's happened to me many times and I kind of got to back it down. For whatever reason, one guitar feels great 11 to 52s, the other feels great 11 to 54s, and they don't feel any different to me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw up on, on the screen my little cheat sheet that I have to help me keep track of all this stuff because I honestly, I would not be able to keep track of you know, all the guitars I have. As you can see on the screen here, I've got the guitar, I've got the brand name and string gauge I'm currently using, I've got information like when they were the strings were last changed, what tuning they're in, all that stuff is very useful. So if you've got more than, I'd say, two guitars and you find it difficult to kind of remember what you last put on there and why, uh, keep track of it. Write it down, put a note in your phone, or do like I do. I've got it on the computer here, so I can always reference it when I need to change the strings. Editing Jay here. One thing I forgot to mention, too, was a great reference tool is StringJoy's String Tension Calculator website. It's a free site you can use. You can input whatever string gauges you want, whatever scale length you're using, whatever tuning you're using, and it will spit out a final total tension number in terms of pounds per square inch or something, and uh, whatever that number is, it's a good reference tool. So whatever your typical string gauge is, whatever your typical scale length is and tuning, put all that stuff in and see what number it gives you. Then when you go to do uh, a lower tuning or what have you, or a different scale length, you can kind of gauge it against that first number to see how close it is, how similar or dissimilar it is. It's a really great reference tool and I would recommend it to anybody. Now, I'm kind of lazy. I don't like to change strings very often. And uh, 
Yeah, I try not to. If they're if they're in good condition, if they don't feel rusted and corroded, you know, and scratchy under my f fingers, I'm just going to leave them on there for a while. I don't really care because I'm not changing strings every week. For the most part, if the strings still play good, still feel good, the action's really good, I don't want to mess with it at all. I will leave those strings on there for well over a year, and I have. People want to obsess about everything. We want to obsess about gear. We want to obsess about the next new plug-in, uh, the next new string gauge, the next new pick gauge, everything, right? You always want to try something new, but in the end, I think what really matters most is that you're comfortable with what you're using, and uh, sticking with what works best for you. So that's pretty much it, guys. Just thought we'd uh, have a quick conversation about string gauges. Let me know down in the comments what string gauge you're using for what tunings and what have you. And if you have any questions about what I use and why, you know, throw them down there as well. I really like hearing from you guys. It's been great. We're almost at that thousand subscribers too, by the way. Hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button in this video. Uh, leave a comment down below. I always appreciate it. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. I'm out of here. See ya.